I'm gonna say something sappy, but after going on that little adventure of my own for two hours, walking back towards our beach house, and knowing that Chips is there and that's where my home is because that's where he is, it feels really good. <laughs> so, whoop, and we're gonna dodge the inchworm. So yeah, home is where, where he is. Him. We have found our bunting. Do you see him? No, come back. I spooked him. This one's not tagged either. Hello, ma'am. Are we in a standoff? So these, you guys, are some of the white-tailed deer that are native to this area. They uh, actually will climb down because Bald Head Island is now connected as a peninsula to some of the areas up north. But they'll either climb down from up north or they will actually swim to the island because it's it, they can jump on the sandbars and make their way from the mainland to the island it's only how many miles from mainland not very many like it's only a 20 minute ferry ride and a del like a di diligent dedicated deer can make that oh <gasps> she is tagged oh so this is a tagged deer which means she's got one tag and no radio collar so no radio collar means that she's not a matriarch and only one tag means that she's gone through one cycle of the conservative or of the um, contraceptive program that they use on the island deer look at her you can see her little ears still poking up but yeah she's just having a perfectly fine time there's people all around us we're in between two roads this is a little construction site where i think they're building something new <laughs> and she's just sitting right there munching away but yeah, the one tag means that she has had her first round of the contraceptives that they're giving the deer so they'll no longer have babies and that that way the island will not become overpopulated and overgrazed and everything destroyed because of the deer eating too much. And when she gets caught a second time, then she'll get the second dose next year, hopefully. There she goes. And she won't have to ever have any more fawns and then they won't have to worry about the population exploding out of control. Oh, wait, she's still there. And then hopefully that'll make the island a little bit better for both the deer and for all the native flora and fauna that live here. There he goes. You guys are so cute. All right, so after several days of trying to find them and get up close to them, I think that Chips and I are going to call it pretty much good 
on finding the painted bunting. You can hear that beautiful call. That is the call of the painted bunting, specifically the eastern painted bunting. They are a beautiful, very vibrant, gorgeous bird, considered one of the most beautiful birds in North America. Really lovely colors, and they are pretty uncommon through most of North America. You usually only see them kind of to the south and up along the east coast, and especially around here during the summer when it's their breeding season. And so they were one of the things we really, really, really wanted to see was the painted buntings and we've been running all over the island and you'll hear them everywhere but it's very hard to get a good solid glimpse of them especially the beautiful colored bright males so who we continue to find is this juvenile and he does not have the bright vibrant colors that the males usually come with he has the drabber colors of a young juvenile male who hasn't yet gotten his full colored plumage so there's a very good chance that he actually was born here fledged here and hasn't left here on their migration down south just yet but one of the really fun ways that we found that you can interact with the buntings if you really, really, really want to see them, and some people come here specifically to find them, is that you can play recordings of a male bunting from the East Coast. You want to make sure it's their specific dialect, because birds do have dialects depending on where they're from. But you can play a recording of their dialect, and then the bunting will come and check out, and he'll try to find where the other male bunting is. And he was very curious, and it's really fun, because if you play it, and I have it on my phone, so we would play it and stand still for a few minutes, and then he'd fly into the tree near us and be looking around for the other bunting. So it was a really great way of being able to get him to come pretty close. And we had a great time. It really feels almost like you're communicating with the bird when you play that, and they respond and come to investigate. So it was really cool, because it was like you were able to speak his language for just a few little clips of a moment. And I really loved it. So we had him fly near us several times and just got a good look at him. He's really cute. He reminds me a lot of my finches. Uh, just right now he has his drab juvenile color so it's not the extreme brightness that you would see in an older male with all of the different color patterns on him. But I've got little snippets of painted buntings uh, that hopefully I can put together and show you guys how hard it's been this entire week that we've been here trying to find the painted bunting, running all over the place, trying to walk so carefully and slowly and quietly so I don't spook him. And we still just can't seem to narrow in on one of the males up close and personal for the big, bright, beautiful colors. But that's okay, because we did find a juvenile male, and I really like him. He's on the Fiddler Crab Trail, and we've had a good time with him. So, yeah, it's been really fun. It's the first time I've ever used a bird recording to, like, call a bird to me, and it was really cool. So, no luck on the big, bright, painted, bunting males, but we have had a really fun adventure just trying to find them. Really cool pattern on the back of this one. I like your spots, blue stripes. Look there, there's one of the white tailed deer. Do you see her watching us? She looks almost like an antelope from over here. No tags on the ears, so this is probably one of the more wily ones who does a really good job of getting away from people. All of the deer on the island are currently trying to be tagged and they're doing that so they can introduce contraceptives into the deer population. And I'll talk more about the deer specifically in the future. But the other night, Chips and I came by, two days ago actually, and we saw a mother white-tailed deer with her fawn here in this commons area, this, this park area. And I wonder if that is mama and baby again, because that mother was not tagged, and neither is this deer. And I think she's going to take off as soon as we walk closer, so I'm going to be quiet and see how close we can get.
That was really fun. So just a simple little walk in the park ended up meaning that I got to see a white-tailed deer. Really cool. At first I thought she wasn't tagged, so maybe she's one of the more wily ones who's kind of avoided a lot of the deer patrol. Um, but no, she had one tag in her ear, so that means that they've got her at least once and that they're hoping to be able to get her again next year so that she will be fully covered and hopefully have no fawns anymore because she will have the contraceptive that works for seven years. And most of the wild white-tailed deer does don't really make it past seven years so that's one of the big ways that they actually try to keep the deer population under control here on bald head island and i need to make like a whole video about it maybe like a whole adventure vlog for the main channel because it's a really great way to talk about the subject hi little ant hey buddy don't bite me okay you go do your ant stuff and i'll do my stuff <laughs> But it's a really great way to talk about the subject of conservation and the options that are available with trying to manage populations because white-tailed deer populations can just utterly destroy an area and we no longer have the predators in the United States that used to keep them in check. So some forests, they're just like almost done, completely eaten to the ground, <laughs> nothing left because there's so many deer. Uh, where you going little guy? There's so many ants on this tree, but it's such a pretty tree, and I really like it. I wanted to come spend some time with the oak trees before we have to go. Uh, and speaking of that, so it is our seventh day on the island. It is our last day here, and I thought we would kind of have, like, maybe some of the afternoon tomorrow to spend here, but that is not the case, because we need to be out of the house by 8.45, and we need to be ready to get on the ferry, and we're going to go home, and I'm going to see how all the birds are doing, and I'm going to get back to work. I actually really have missed making videos for the main channel that are like our normal gameplay videos because I'm a storyteller and I love telling stories and I haven't been able to make stories <laughs> in our games in over a week now and it really it, it, I miss it I really miss it and I think that is an indicator that I'm in the right field <laughs> where I actually miss my work and I'm ready to get back to work and I'll have like half of Tuesday, Wednesday, and then all of Wednesday and Thursday, and then Friday morning, extremely early in the morning, Chips and I are going to be waking up and headed off, and we are going to be jumping on a plane and going to Detroit, and from Detroit we are renting a car, and then we're driving to Ann Arbor in Michigan, my very first time in Michigan, and that's just kind of happening all of a sudden, it's very exciting. So we are headed off to Ann Arbor so that we can hopefully look at neighborhoods, maybe canvas some houses, we are actually going to be walking a lot of the parks and the trails because green space is so important to me. <laughs> green space is what a Siri needs to be happy. So it was really sweet because that's one of the first things he suggested. He booked a hotel that's actually right next to the Nature Science Museum. So we're gonna go look at the Natural Science Museum. We're gonna eat at some of the vegan restaurants because this is gonna be the city we are gonna make our home for the next six or seven years, maybe a little bit longer, depending on if he ends up with a Fulbright scholarship or what his PhD work ends up doing or how long we end up traveling abroad for his research. But this is gonna be our home for like six or seven years. It's so surreal. Oh my goodness. I can't believe that. I've never lived in one place for six or seven years since I was like maybe 10. And it's going to be really fun because now I'm a confident adult who knows what I like. I know my interest. I know my passion. And that really lets you live entirely differently when you really know what you love out of life and what you're seeking out of life. So this will be the first time I have somewhere where I'm going to be able to sit down at my favorite restaurant. And I'm going to know as long as this restaurant doesn't go out of business, I could be eating at it four years from now. That's really amazing to me. I... I really can't put into words how excited that makes me. So yeah, we're still going to be traveling. I'm a little bit worried because I really need to get lots more content up on the main channel if I'm going to do my job right and make sure that the views stay high enough that the bills are paid. <laughs> uh, did you guys know that like one view on YouTube is like 0. .0002 cents? That's how much you get. <laughs> so you have to kind of, that's why I, I make so many videos it's it's paying your bills by extremely small fragments of very tiny pennies <laughs> that each individual person gives you probably one dedicated viewer on my channel gives me maybe two cents a year <laughs> it's really tiny but you you end up 
balancing it out by reaching as many people as possible with as many adventures as possible. So long story short, ready to be home, ready to get back to work, but that doesn't mean I, I'm ready to leave you, you beautiful oak tree. Don't think that I, I neglect you. I love this oak tree. It's really fun. It's in the commons and I come by and hang out with it on this cute little bridge every day and that's where I had a deer just now so it's really cool. But yeah, we're headed home tomorrow early on the ferry. I'll check in on persimmon and osea and see if their eggs have hatched, if they still look fertile, how my birds are doing. I'll check in on my probably dead garden on the deck. <laughs> And then we're getting ready for another phase of adventure. So I'll do some vlogs probably on the main and definitely on the vlog channel when we are traveling to Michigan for the first time because we're going to be hitting a lot of trails and looking at the Natural Science Museum. And then summer hits and summer I'm going to try to tackle some really big goals like starting to attack my student loans to pay those off, working on just being more active and outside more, which the vlog channel and hugging trees helps with so much. Thank you tree. It really gets you up and moving and grooving. And then trying to just put up tons and tons and tons of videos over the summer because summer is one of the best time to put up YouTube videos because people are home and they want to see adventures and I want to tell stories and adventures so it's all going to work out. And I have to show you guys my cute painted bunting socks I got. So I'll show you guys those later. But now it's time to go to the beach because I have to say goodbye to the beach now. I'm not going to take your worm. You're welcome to that. I promise I'm not interested. Headed down to the beach and it looks empty. There's no one here. I'm actually the only one here right now that I can see. And it's beautiful. <laughs> but I'm going to be saying goodbye to the beach now. Because when I get home, it's going to be time to clean the beach house and get ready to go because we have to leave early in the morning. And I've really loved it. I loved all the surprising discoveries I found up along the beach. I've really loved walking hand in hand with chips for hours here. It's been wonderful. It's been wonderful. And I have to say thank you so much to Chips and his family for planning this and bringing me along. And especially to Chips because he knew I wanted to go to the beach. And he made all of this happen. And it's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna walk along the beach all by myself and savor it. Maybe find something cute. See the last of the adventures that we're gonna find here. And I'm not gonna be sad because there's always adventures. There's always adventures and there's always places, even familiar places, to find new adventures in. So, let's see what we find. This is the little chest piece of a crab who became someone's dinner. So it's like his little chest armor piece that you see right there. So many tiny little birdie footprints everywhere over here. They're just running across everybody's like footprints in the sand, all the human footprints. And then it's just so many tiny little bird footprints. They're so cute. They're one of my favorite things in the world. Look at how many. Wow, this is one of the oldest ones I've ever seen. Look at this, it's a literal fossil. This is amazing. I can't even begin to guess how old this must be. Wow, it's really pretty. So they don't allow vehicles on the beach. And when you see these tracks, it's actually not just like your average Joe person being like, 
hey, I'm gonna go be a jerk and drive on the beach and destroy the fragile ecosystem. This is the little dune buggy that uh, actually the people who are in charge of taking care of the sea turtles put out. And they do tours around the whole island all night long to make sure they don't miss any new sea turtle nest. So whenever you see these tracks, you know this is where they've been roaming and searching for sea turtle eggs. Another Wilk egg case where all of the little guys seem to have made it out. So yay for them! This oyster shell grew to be gigantic! Oh my gosh! So wrapping up my walk on the beach, my last walk on the beach here on Bald Head, and I'm really content. <laughs> when you're like me and you can find joy in every old seashell, and every little scuttling of bird feet on the sand or ghost crab tracks, then this whole world is just so full of beauty and joy and things to feel so grateful for. So I'm really, really happy. I'm really happy. Because I know a lot of people who get super depressed when a vacation's over, but all I can think is anytime I need to remember this, I just look at the video, I look at the, the pictures I've taken, or I turn to Chips and I share the memories with him. And honestly, that's what's pulling me away from the beach right now, is I've had my fill of whatever beautiful energy it can offer me to remember and be inspired by and teach about the beach in the future. And my heart is just tugging me. I can feel it like a little waypoint in my chest towards Chips. And I want to go home <laughs> so I can be by his side, even if that's just cleaning up. Hello, Mr. Pelican! That's a pelican! Even if it's just cleaning up the beach house while he listens to the game, because there's a basketball game with like some famous curry guy playing in it tonight. And <laughs> even if it's just that kind of everyday stuff. I'm so happy because <laughs> I'm walking back towards him and back towards where my heart really is. So I think that's, that's what it's all about, you know? I've had a great vacation, new experiences. I've had a wonderful day. I have a few more surprises to show you guys that I got from the gift shop. Chips went with me today and he said they looked cute so I got them. <laughs> and now it's time for the next thing. And I have to say, this is probably one of the first times I can truly say I don't have any regrets, even for the things I wasn't able to accomplish, like getting a video of a beautiful male bunting in full plumage. But I have no regrets because I just had so much fun. It was such an awesome time and I pushed myself, that's what it is! I pushed myself so much harder than I normally do and I put my foot down <laughs> in the sand that's not very effective but I put my foot down and said that I really wanted to go on some adventures and so I gave myself permission to go on them even if no one else came with me because I was bringing you guys with me and that mattered a lot to me and so it was really it was really like discovering a new side to myself this time because I was trying to share it with you guys so thank you all right, I'm gonna work my way home because I really wanna go see my chips. <laughs> Alright, so I have some sparkling water and a fun little story to finish the seventh day on the island with. So you guys just saw how I had my ode to the beach and I had my last beach walk so I thought and I had gotten my shoes on and just as I put my last shoe on and look up, guess who drives off to me in the golf cart? It's Chips.
and he had been looking for me. And so he popped out just as I was getting ready to leave the beach. And we walked hand in hand on the beach for almost an hour, just savoring it together. And I thought it was so sweet and romantic that just after I had done a video saying, I really like the beach, but I miss chips. I feel like my heart's just tugging me towards him. I look up and he's driving towards me. <laughs> I just thought that was so sweet. I thought that was so amazingly sweet. And I'm back and he's already packed everything and cleaned everything and has a glass of sparkling water waiting for me. And he's making banana ice cream right now, which is just frozen bananas and cocoa and it's delicious. And we're just going to relax together and... I just love him so much and I just thought that was amazing. He's whipped this trip together when I said I wanted to go to the beach and he came and he found me because he wanted to go on one last romantic beach walk with me and he's not even like a sappy guy but he is so true and loving. When he says that he loves me, he means it with everything and it's the most amazing experience of my life. So I'll talk about that one day in the future because it's amazing how we got here. And I will see you guys tomorrow when we will be headed home, checking in on the birds, and I will be settling in so that Siri can be working very hard and trying to get many, many a new video out. So we'll see what happens, but I love this guy so much. <laughs>